I feel like I'm actually in hell with the red lights. Okay, Google, turn all the lights hot pink. Sure, changing 17 lights to hot pink. Cute. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I don't know if you guys know who Milo Yiannopoulos is. He was definitely someone who was of more prominence back in, I would say, 2016. That's when he would go viral all the time. He is an online provocateur, very controversial, banned off of almost everywhere at this point. But he's found a way to make headlines once again, this time for coming out as straight. He is very gay. Like, gay gay. Very gay. But he is now converting to straight for religious purposes and opening a conversion therapy center in Florida. And y'all thought 2020 was crazy. <laughs> By the way, when he opens a conversion therapy, should I go there and test it out for a YouTube video? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> that would be a show. This is a really spicy topic. Anytime you mix religion and LGBT, it's like a balancing act. It's like someone's going to get mad. But that's every video for me, so whatever. I want to talk about ex-gay people in this video. People who claim to have converted from gay to straight, changed their orientation, and are now living a straight lifestyle as opposed to a gay one. I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> but really quickly, before we jump into this super spicy topic, I just want to remind you guys my podcast, The Blair White Project, is still ongoing on my Patreon, link below. Today I'm actually posting an episode where I interview a new friend of mine named Tova. She's a trans woman from Ghana in Africa, and she actually escaped Ghana to America, transitioned, and is now wanted in her own country. And she's probably the most interesting person I've ever met. The conversation is wild, and you can click the link down below to watch that episode and every other episode. So on being ex-gay, listen, it is impossible to know just because of Milo's past behavior and attention-seeking and saying things for the sake of being controversial. It's impossible to know if he's actually converting to straight. I, I have my doubts. However, I want to make this less about Milo and more about the topic of being ex-gay in general. Because whether or not Milo is actually going to be straight and marry a woman, which is really funny and awkward thought, to be honest, in my own head. Ex-gay people and ex-LGBT people have been around always. Through personal choice or religious choice, religious experience, people have always claimed to have both wanted and, in their words, effectively changed from gay to straight. And I have to preface this conversation with saying I know next to nothing about religion. Religion has never been a part of my world, of my upbringing, and I know that might be shocking or odd to some people because I think most people, even atheists and you know people who aren't religious now, probably had it in their upbringing and probably have been around it. I just have never been around super religious people. My parents did take me to church a few times growing up, but I think that had more to do with them wanting to do what like good parents do rather than them actually having any beliefs rooted in religion. So that fizzled out quickly. I only went a few times and I don't really have many vivid memories of it. I've never really cared about religion that much and that's not to sound offensive or like I don't care about religious people because I respect religious freedom, but I've never really sat and pondered like, is God real? Is God not real? Is that like, it's just never been a part of my world. I've never really understood it and I've never really cared to include that in my life. I do, however, respect religious freedom, and I think that for some people, it makes them better people when it's used in the right way. For an example, my mother, when my father passed away, sought out religion as a way to cope with the passing of her husband, and I don't know where she would have been without it. I think it really helped her deal with the mourning and the passing of my dad. So we are all many people during our lifetime, so maybe 40-year-old me will be religious, but 27-year-old me is not, and that's just how I am. When it comes to a person's orientation, I am of the opinion that you cannot change your sexual orientation. I think that that is immutable. I think people's sexual orientations can grow and expand over time, but I don't think you can remove a gender from your orientation. Like, I think if you're attracted to men, like, you're just gonna be. However, I think you can change behavior. So, to me, when I think of ex-gay people, I split them up into two camps. The folks who say that they through therapy or any other means have changed their attractions and they are no longer attracted to men they are now attracted to women or vice versa for lesbians um that's one camp and i i don't believe them i'm sorry I, however i do believe the folks that say that they change their behavior so they'll still admit like i still have same-sex attractions but i do not act on them because of my religion or my moral code so 
I think that's different. And again, it's impossible to know how serious Milo is, but he did put out a quote that seems to sort of back up that thought process for me. He said, I treat it like an addiction. You never stop being an alcoholic. I hope people will support and pray for me. So this is just not a moral code that I personally observe or have in my life. Clearly, like I'm trans and very happy with it. I have no desire to change it. And I don't think I could change it even if I wanted to. My personal moral code is that anything that happens in the bedroom between two consenting adults is acceptable. If it doesn't harm people, especially people outside of that consensual transaction, like it's just not my business. And I don't want it to be my business, sweetie. And I'm not saying it's a right or wrong decision for people to choose to or refuse to rather live a gay lifestyle and have gay interactions if they personally think it violates their ethics or their religion or like their family values or something. Like, I guess it's just something that's come with a little more age for me. I used to judge it a lot, but now I'm like, whatever is right for you is right for you. I'm very much of the leave me alone and I'll leave you alone type of camp. Like, I'm not necessarily going to believe that you have cured your homosexuality. I don't believe in that. But if if the choice to suppress that is right for you that you and you believe that's right for you, like, I'm not a person that's going to sit here in moral judgment of you, just as I wouldn't want you to be in moral judgment of me choosing to live my life as a trans woman because that's authentic to who and what I am. Capiche? The topic of conversion therapy, however, I do have to say is banned in 20 states because throughout the years there have just been a lot of abuse and just really bad allegations that come out of a lot of these centers and these conversion clinics. Things like electroshock therapy to shock the gay out of people, which causes brain damage and beating the gay out of people. These were all things that were found in these places and it led to a lot of states and areas saying, you know what? We're just going to outlaw this right now. And I have known multiple people throughout my life who, when they were teenagers, have gone to these facilities because their parents didn't believe in them being LGBT. And unfortunately, and this goes hand in hand, I don't think you can suppress sexuality. Some of the adults at these facilities would actually prey on the teenagers because it was just like this repression of sexuality that came out in unhealthy ways. And like, I have just heard very bad things personally from people I know at these clinics. And so I am not a supporter of these clinics. Important thing to note though, that these clinics are not always within a religious context. Like some of them are just conversion therapy clinics that don't have any religion attached to it. So it's not like the sole blame is even religion on that. It's just like, corruption and there's just been a lot of bad things that come out of those clinics. And think what you want, believe what you want, live by whatever moral code you want, but when you start shocking the gay out of people, supposedly, like, that's disgusting and crazy and wrong and there is no evidence that goes back to support that. That's what we used to do to gay people in mental asylums and, sweetie, they're still gay. They're just gay with brain damage now and that's tragic. And it does worry me when you suppress part of who you are because I think even the orientation aside, when you try to suppress something that is naturally within you and part of your spirit and your being, I think that it can come out in really unhealthy ways. But there is just a different path for everyone and if the path for you is that, yes, I'm attracted to men of the same sex, but I want to not live that way, if that's right for you, I don't know how I can sit here and say like, accept me for my life, but I won't accept you for your life. Like, I just wish you happiness and I wish you all the best and I hope that it actually works out in your favor. It is such a weird concept for me though, because ever since I was this high, I have been just so dead set on being myself. It was always the utmost important for me to be exactly who I was growing up. I always had this like rampant individualism that removed any fear of like societal judgment or authority to the point where I was just doing my own thing always. And I just never cared. The way I came out to my mom that I liked boys was telling her in passing in the kitchen, hey mom, by the way, I like boys. And she was like gagged, but it wasn't a big deal to me. I was like, you're not gonna judge me. That would be dumb, right? So I'll just tell you. <laughs> and the way I came out as trans to my mom was on a phone call. That one was a little more dramatic, but still, it was always just like, it's just like an update. I was like, hey mom, this is happening now. It was never like, <sighs> We have to sit down and really talk about that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so what I get nervous of is when ex-gay people, it's okay to be ex-gay. Like if that's the choice for you, the choice for you. But what I get nervous is when they try to impose that choice on other people. What's right for you is not the universal truth. And I know that gets sticky because people who are religious do believe that their religion is the universal truth, but not everyone follows your religion. 
and a lot of LGBT people do get very upset when they see these stories of ex-gay and they will lash out at the people who claim to be ex-gay and ridicule them and I do think that is wrong because that person is on a journey and whether or not they have actually effectively changed their orientation, it's not even really your business as long as they're not trying to force it on you. What's really interesting is I posted on my Instagram story and told people, if you are ex-gay or ex-LGBT and you have a story and you want to reach out to me, email me and tell me your story. And I thought maybe I would get like one or two and maybe one of them was going to be just someone like BSing just to make it in a video or something. But I got a lot of emails. Like, I would say I got around like 75 emails which is a lot because I put out feelers before for videos like tell me your story if you've experienced this and it has not been 75 emails it's been like a fraction of that so a lot of people have this story but I want to read one email in particular because it did have me looking at this topic through a different lens and I think it may do the same for you so this ex-gay story has actually nothing to do with conversion therapy or with religion it's different this email and obviously anonymous is saying I would say I am an ex-homosexual. From what I can gather of why I was gay in the first place was because of as a child, around nine, when I was still being I already had a slight attraction to men I couldn't explain. When I was about 11, I got stronger and stronger until last year where me finally getting some support and help for my my attractions to men have plummeted. Not completely, but when I used to only date biological men, that includes transgender people, and found it impossible to date a girl two years ago, now I am literally dating a girl and it's been quite weird for me because I told that very same girl last year I could never date one. And that is something that I think people often exclude from this topic of ex-gay or curing the gay or whatever, is that some people, through experiences in childhood, bad experiences obviously, do have their self-concept and their view of their own orientation. It's skewed and I do think that that's valid. So to sum it up, I don't think that you can magically switch your attractions. I think that that is an unhealthy lie. However, I do think you can change your behaviors for whatever reason may suit you. And whether or not that is the right decision to make, I cannot tell you what's right for you in your life. I'm not living your life. So I think it's important to understand that difference. Also, in conclusion, don't expect me to convert anytime soon, sweetie. Although doing a video where I go to Milo's conversion therapy clinic might actually be amazing, like going and testing it out for a video. Or like wearing prosthetics, like male prosthetics and looking, trying really hard to look like a man, that might be a good video too. Look at all this content, all these ideas, oh my god. With that being said, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well as my second channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter because I post on there way more than I do on here. So you got to follow those to keep up with me. Also, remember to check out my podcast. A new episode is dropping today. Link in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video where I will still be trans. I think. Love you.